Hey guys and welcome to another Football Manager video. This is the latest in a series of videos I've been making that consider in detail the recruitment of players in a specific position. So far we've looked at strikers, wing-backs and centre-backs. Today we'll be looking for a defensive midfielder. We'll be data-driven and let's see if we can improve the squad. Let's get into it. So we've got to the end of the third season of our save. We've got to the end of our first season in the Premier League where surprisingly we came second. Our club's reputation is yet to catch up with the fact that we've got a Champions League place for next season. Our reputation is more in line with bottom end Premier League clubs and top end championship clubs. This may make it difficult for us to improve the squad as we come into the summer transfer window, as it may be that players of a higher standard are not interested to come and play for us. Last season in our two defensive midfielder roles, two players, James Garner and John McGinn, played the majority of the minutes. Comas, shown on the screen here, mainly played at centre back. The backup defensive midfielder was Sam Field, who's the club captain. With Umpanzu going back at the end of his loan, we are left with three defence midfielders in the squad and a need to make a signing either of a new starter or new depth, depending on what we can find in the transfer market. Switching here to the scoring system I calculate in Python, and if you want to use this system, you'll find all the links you need in the description below. We'll see that Garner is considered the best defence midfielder, with McGinn a stride behind at 13.8 and Field a little bit further behind. Looking at the two players' profiles, we can see that they're not entirely similar. McGinn is smaller and quicker. Field is more of a physical presence. Before we consider the players' attributes side by side, just a reminder of the weightings that some people use for defensive midfielders. The most notable weightings are towards work rate and stamina. The next most towards pace and acceleration, and then passing. I also look for tackling, even though that isn't something that the weightings explicitly look for. Comparing the players' attributes side by side, we can see that on work rate and stamina, McGinn is clearly better than Field, and Field is probably not at Premier League level. Similarly, for acceleration and pace, Field isn't quite at the level one would expect of a Premier League midfielder, with McGinn a bit better, and perhaps just about in line with a Premier League player. Field does, however, have better passing, and so it's made sense for the season that's just gone by that Field comes on as a substitute. There are two other points worth mentioning. One, McGinn is injured, having just got injured towards the end of the season. He has an Achilles problem and is out for three to five months. Also, Field is the club captain, and McGinn and Field are the two most influential players in the squad. All in all, what looks like upgrading on McGinn and Field would be a natural step for our club as we move towards Champions League football. It's a situation we're going to need to handle with care, and it's going to depend on the players we can find when we start to look at the transfer market. We're going to look for players at three points in time over the summer transfer window. First, now at the end of the season, at the end of May. Second, on the 1st of July, just after players' contracts end on the 30th of June. And third, as we come towards the end of the window and towards the deadline. With a club growing in reputation as QPR is, it may be that over time, more and more players become interested in playing for us. So there's a dynamic where we need to think about whether to stick or twist whether to go with the players that are available at any point in time, or whether to try to wait and see if better players will become available. Okay, so I've tweaked the filter here in the player search screen. I've made sure this says slightly interested, which is the one I think leaves us with the players that actually want to sign for us. Tell me in the comments if you feel differently. And now I'm just going to run the Python code, which will have a look at the players. Okay, so here's the output of the Python code. And I've sorted it here by, it says Vol, which is simply Secundo Volante, so defensive midfielder. The scoring system has McGinn at 13.8. So all the players from Cajust here upwards have a higher score on the scoring system. I think we'll take into the shortlist here, McTominay, probably not a 32-year-old. Dieng, Onana, probably not a 30 or 33-year-old. Or Koulibaly at 30. Yusuf. And I think that's probably it. I've put on the screen here the shortlisted midfielders together with an attribute view that running from left to right goes from the more weighted to the less weighted attributes. All have solid work rate and stamina, decent passing and decent pace and acceleration. McTominay is probably the standout of the group and when we compare him to McGinn we can see he's a more complete player with the exception of not having the same amount of vision looking forward. McTominay's 14 leadership and 18 teamwork could go some way to filling any gaps in the top of our hierarchy after the departure of either Field or McGinn. Onana also profiles as a well-rounded defence midfielder, similar to McTominay, although with some of the vision that perhaps McTominay lacked when compared with McGinn. Onana's 15 leadership would also help at the top of our hierarchy. In this save, Al-Hassan Yusuf appears to have developed to a slightly less rounded profile than Onana, 
and Dieng profiles are pretty similar to Yusuf. We shall send all four for scouting and see what the scouts come back with. Okay, so the scouts are back and a couple of things I noticed. The first is apparently McTominay, who I think is a good Premier League player, wants 175,000 a week. Well, we can't pay that. So if that really is correct, then we're going to have to wait and see if McTominay's wage requests become a bit more sensible. The report on Onana is fine, but not massively exciting. And the report on Dieng, to me at least, would indicate a pretty solid depth signing, free transfer as his contract's expiring, solid hidden ratings, and a player of about the level of field or perhaps slightly better. When we compare Dieng to field, we see a player whose polygon is weighted more towards pace, acceleration, and the physical attributes, and Dieng's stamina and work rates stand out as clearly impressive, even by Premier League standards. So I think the plan here at the end of May is to see if there's a good cheap deal to be done with Dieng for depth, and then see whether McTominay can moderate his wage demands. If not, then we can wait perhaps until later in the summer. Okay, so let's try to sign Dieng, who's playing at the minute in Egyptian football and only earning 8,500 a week. That ask of 42 is above the estimate 26 to 34, and I think a number more like 30 is right. I'm okay for this not to work. This might not work at this point. We might need to wait until later in the summer and see whether or not anyone else is interested. And on McTominay, let's see, 182.75. Okay, so I think at this point we wait until the 1st of July and see where we are then. Okay, so now a couple of weeks into July, and a couple more players are appearing on the player search stream and look for defence midfielders. We can see now this guy, Hollis, from Sparta Prague. And as we go down, we can see this new guy, Pablo Maia, from Sao Paulo in Brazil. And scrolling a bit further down, a couple more guys that jump out. Dekure on a free transfer. And this guy, Merlin Roll from Hertha, relatively low value. Uh, and a strong personality, age 24. So in the absence of better ideas, one thing I've been doing is just playing with relaxing the filter, and in particular, taking off the ball, which I think is one of the less important attributes on this list, down, to see if that increases the number of players found, and it does. And in particular, when I run the scoring system, it adds this player here, Flynn Downs, age 27, English, at Napoli, uh, on the transfer list, with a value of 4.6 million, good personality, and a pretty good score on the scoring system. Looking at Downs, he does indeed have off the ball 11, but he also has decent acceleration and pace, 13. He has good work rate and stamina, 15 for both, and then is pretty well rounded from there. Comparing Downs to Field, you can see a fairly solid upgrade, and Downs also profiles well against McGinn, so we'll scout Downs as well. Okay, so while we wait for the scouting reports to come back, a new development, which is we've had a bid for Garner. Garner's the midfielder we want to keep for sure, and we didn't really want to upgrade on. Uh, we've got here a bid of all in all 30 million. Uh, Garner's got a minimum release clause of 34 and a half, and he wants to leave. I don't think we will accept anything below the 34 and a half. Uh, it will be difficult to replace Garner, and so I think for now we will simply be saying no to this and see if they come back at the release clause. OK, sure enough, the next bid is in. It meets the release clause. I don't see much point in trying to compete with them for a new contract. So it looks like we now need to find a midfielder to replace Garner, as well as simply an extra guy for depth. OK, so Garner's now moved to Al Itihad. And let's hope he enjoys that 400000 per week. For our part, I've put a 6.5 million offer into Downs. When you compare Downs to Garner, you can see it probably is a downgrade. But for 7 million for Downs compared to over 30 for Garner, the net position would be pretty good if we can get Downs in. Here's Downs for his contract. I think we, we pretty much have to sort of take what, what we get here. We, we do at this stage really need to bring this guy in. There are a bunch of players at about the same level. So I guess we don't absolutely have to bring him in, but I would prefer to have a, another player in the squad from England. OK, so Downs is now willing to sign at 6.5 million. And let's just take a moment to whittle down the list and figure out what we're going to do. So a couple of easy whittle downs. Decore uh, has got lower pace than the others. I think he's getting a bit too old. I think it's time to take him off the list. McTominay hasn't regulated his demands contract-wise. And that leaves us with this group. 
Oh, actually, we can also remove this 33-year-old here. That leaves a bit of this group, and to my mind, these players are all pretty much in the same tier. I think it now becomes a question of whether we can get any of these players at a much better deal than the others. The first is Dieng is on a free transfer, and we'll come back to him in a moment and see what that will cost. The other is, if we look at the options who are willing to come on loan, this guy, Jibril Sal from Marseille, is a player who's willing to consider coming to us on loan. Okay, so let's see if we can take this mandatory fee and turn it into optional. Okay, and now on De Yang, let's see if we can negotiate a deal with him as a backup. Okay, these demands are more sensible now. And we'll go ahead and bring Downs in. Okay, the deal is done on Downs, he's now in the squad. Another thing we'll do is on McGinn, whose contract does expire at the end of this season, we have a one-year extension, so I'm going to go ahead and trigger that, because I think McGinn's going to be in the team for this year. Strong start for Downs, who's been sent off on his debut. <laughs> okay, so after all that, De Jong decided he wasn't going to sign for us after all. He had an offer from Feyenoord, which is accepted. And so I think we're really left down to this. We can we can bring in Jabril Sal. We're going to do it on loan with an option to buy. One well, that leaves us with Sal, McGinn and Downs, all with clear places in the squad. And then with Field, we just need to decide whether we're going to extend his contract or try to do something different at the deadline. So we've ended up extending Field's contract. It's a four-year deal, 34,000 a week. We haven't ended up where I expected to at the beginning of this transfer window. I thought we would upgrade either Field or McGinn, but in the end, we've extended both their contracts, McGinn by one year and Field by four. It just wasn't there, this window, to improve the squad substantially in the midfield position. And in the end, what we've done with the signings of Downs and Sal is really tread water while we wait for the club's reputation to improve and our ability to sign better players to develop. If anything, we may have downgraded losing Ghana, but we have at least gained about 25 million through the transfers. Looking more broadly at the transfer window now, it's complete. You can see that we have managed to net spend about 13 million. Most of the spending was up front where I've signed Eli Wahi from Lons. We're seeing some somewhat worrying red arrows on the page but he has scored three goals in his first four starts for the club. And with that, I think we'll bring to the end the video. That was a difficult transfer window, a bit of a grind in the end, uh, but just goes to show that if you take a data-driven approach to signing players, sometimes the best conclusion is that you just stick with what you've got and just wait for better things to appear a season or two down the road. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. There are more on my channel focusing on different positions if you'd like to watch those. If you'd like to use a scoring system that I use in these videos, there's everything you need to see in the description of this video and also in other videos on my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.